What's up guys? My name's Ryan and I'm a California based portrait photographer and today we're going to take a look at how I edit my photos for Instagram and what makes them pop. If you're looking for some easy tips on how to make your photos stand out using Lightroom, then you've come to the right place. Please like and subscribe if you feel compelled to do so and feel free to leave feedback in the comments about other videos that you'd be interested in seeing. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in Lightroom. Um, these are some photos that me and the lady took uh, outside of her place. We wanted to get the sunset. So let's get into this. Uh, we are a little bit underexposed here, as you might be able to see. Um, I did not bring my ND filter with me. So what I like to do in this scenario is start working on the basic color corrections and stuff. The histogram has the highlights way blown out, um, as to be expected and uh, some of the shadows are a little bit crushed so we're going to go into the highlights here try to get some of the sky out you can see we slide it down there and you can see the sky popping out a little bit i don't want to go all the way though so we'll bring it down there and then uh, the shadows here we have like this we have this nice like path here um, that i wanted to kind of get some leading lines from so we'll bring the shadows up a little bit there um, this is some quick edits here, so not too much about this. The main thing I wanted to touch on is the is what I feel like the most powerful tool uh, in Lightroom is if you're going to be editing mainly out of here, um, and that is the curves tool. So we'll get down there in a second. Um, we brought the whites up just a little bit and the blacks down just a little bit. Uh, as you can maybe see here, we are a little crushed out, but we're going to take care of that. And then I'm not really going to touch the vibrance and the saturation yet because I want to get to that after we work with the tone curve. So um, I am going to bring the clarity up just a little bit because on Instagram, uh, a lot of these photos are really small and you want to be able to grab someone's attention with a really small thumbnail. I feel like the clarity, although if you were to go overboard with it, it looks pretty bad. Uh, a little bit of clarity, as you can see, kind of brings out the path there. And we don't want to go too much because it'll kind of make her look a little crispy. <laughs> and we don't want to be crispy. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that there. Um, so I'm going to move down to the tone curve here and start working on that so that I can get a final kind of like exposure here. So we'll start with the plain point curve. And uh, I personally like my blacks matted out quite a bit. I feel like it uh, is kind of a popular style right now and it fits me. So we'll bring the blacks up there and then we'll leave the highlights on uh, unmatted there. Uh, and then I like to add a point here on the, on the right and a point over here on the left. And we just want to get a really gradual S curve here. So you see we bring up the mid tones, it still gets more and more matted. But as I bring down the slider, in the shadows, we finally get some contrast there. So on, off, on, off, right? So we're gonna do that. And then because this was a sunset picture, I kind of want to get into the separate channels there, the red, green, and the blue. Some, some people might like doing this in Photoshop. I personally think it's just a little bit easier here. So we're going to make a pretty dramatic S curve on these to kind of make the saturation of each channel pop. This is the red here. And you can see everything red like the in the clouds and stuff are gonna start popping out. And then we're gonna get into the green and put another S curve in here. Get the greens to come out there. And then the blue and we'll balance this all out in a second. Okay. So yeah, here we go. We have a pretty, pretty steep S curve here on every channel. Uh, looks a little oversaturated. That's fine. Again, right now we're going to be correcting a lot of this. But you kind of use your eye here. Um, if I, you know, crush the green curve down too much, you could see it. It kind of destroys the background. Um, and then the reds kind of the same thing, you know, you don't want to go too overboard, but you can use a bit heavier hand than you think. 
So the tone curve, like I said, most powerful thing I think that you could possibly use um, in either Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, the curves layers in Photoshop will definitely be a little bit more powerful uh, if you have the patience, but I really only get into Photoshop for like touch up and stuff because uh, I feel like it's just nice and condensed here. You can have the one window to deal with that here. Um, and that's really all you need for social media stuff anyways. I feel like you don't get a high enough resolution photo to do otherwise. So we have a little bit too much contrast in the photo now. So that's what I was kind of saying. Um, we'll get back up here now to the basic corrections after I've got my colors kind of where I want them to be. And we'll drop the contrast down just a little bit so that you can kind of see what that do. Oops, we lost ourselves there. Um, we'll see what that does like to her face, right? Here's, here's the extra contrast kind of brings out um, some, some stuff under her eyes and nose and stuff. We want, we want, don't want to accentuate that. So I'm bringing the contrast down to like negative 14, something like that. And I'm actually going to bring the exposure down while I'm up here too. Um, to get those highlights out of being uh, completely blown out. So there we have some nice color in the sky and we can see a little bit of the detail in the clouds there. Um, maybe even just a little bit more because we're going to do a little trick here in a second to bring up the exposure of the model uh, because we were using some on-camera flash here but I didn't want to, again, blow her out completely. So um, the saturation again is a little bit too heavy handed. So I'm going to come back here to the, the master saturation tool. We're going to bring that down a little bit, probably about negative five, negative seven, and then tiny bit of vibrance. So we don't lose all the color. Cool. Um, at this point, since I want to be able to see what the color stuff is doing to the model, I'm going to put uh, a little radial filter here. Uh, some people might brush here. I, I don't like brushing because I feel like sometimes, I mean, okay, sometimes there's some place for brushing, but uh, in this case, you know, a little inverted mask on a radio filter will, will give you a much nicer feather. Um, and like that you see there uh, where I can control that. If I brush her, sometimes it'll get some weird haloing around spots and you got to get really in deep there and make sure the brush is really, really precise. Um, I don't want to do that. I kind of just want to make her pop out just a little bit. And so you can see there um, with about 0.5 um, on your dodge or your exposure tool on a radio filter, what it does, there it is without it, right? And then with it, I think that is probably right where I want to be, 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere in there. Um, so. We're looking pretty good here. Um, before I get done with this completely though, uh, and take it into touch up uh, in Photoshop, I want to go ahead and get into the HSL tab here and do the final color stuff because some of this stuff, um, you know, it looks good, but it doesn't, it, it's a little distracting to me. So I get down into the saturation, um, and I'm going to play with the greens here first. Um, the greens could be a little desaturated in my opinion. So I bring that down there and kind of match them with the back of the scene here. And then I think the yellows could serve to be a little bit less intense too. Um, so I'm going to bring those over to the left a little tiny bit. Um, and then I also will adjust the hue on the yellows so it's a little bit warmer and the hue on the greens so it's a little bit I want to say gray but a little bit grayer you know uh, I really want her to kind of stand out uh, against the background here and although there's some nice scenery uh, you know how sometimes the the blurred backgrounds the bokeh can kind of like be distracting so I just want them to be there but not uh, you know, invading on her little bubble here. Uh, you can see the kind of framing there is really nice. Uh, the trees kind of almost split down the pathway and gave her like this, this you know, avenue to stand in. So we want that to pop out really nice. Uh, so then I'm going to go and do 
the adjustment on the blues. Blue, the only thing in the blue channel really is her pants. I don't really mess with the saturation here uh, too much. I just changed the hue of the pants so that it, there's really no teal in this image. I feel like a little bit of teal kind of pops out and then I do desaturate it just a little bit so that it's not in your face. Okay, um, other than that, I don't really mess with the oranges here too much. I do like uh, her skin tones. Her skin tones came out pretty true. Um, but I am going to do one final thing here uh, before we get into Photoshop, and that is going to be the uh, the white balance. Uh, it, it was in camera at 6400, um, which was fine before we started messing with the saturation curves. But now that the saturation curves are so heavy handed to get the look that I wanted, I'm actually going to warm this up just a little bit here and I feel like that's really nice and then I'm going to get over here to take a little bit out of that too. So yeah, that is where it is before we go into Photoshop and that is what it was. Um, take a look at that and see exactly uh, how powerful that tone curve really is. Uh, you know, the you can get so many different looks out of this one tool um, and you can really start to build like a body of work like this. You can build a set uh, with each model or with each landscape that you're taking uh, with just like different tools in, uh, excuse me, with different uh, things in the tone curve. You know, if you're really looking for that matted out film old vintage look or if you're looking for that really HDR, you know, bright brights, really uh, deep shadows look, all that stuff can, you can really get to it in your tone curve. So let's take this into Photoshop, um, do some skin retouch, which we'll probably save for another video, and then we'll get you a final before and after. All right, so quick little speed through in Photoshop uh, for some retouch, a little straight hair removal, a little bit of skin retouch some dodge and burn on uh, specific parts. And here we are with the finished image. Um, you can see we smoothed her out a little bit, just a little bit of contouring. Uh, didn't do a whole lot to the rest of the image. That's why I do most of my stuff in Lightroom for colors. Then you can see the original image right here. And that is what it looked like before. And this is what it looks like after. So please like and subscribe if you do like this video. Um, I can continue to produce little tutorials like this. And if you're interested, please let me know about any other techniques that you might want to know about in Lightroom uh, and to some extent Photoshop. All right, so that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped a little bit with some stuff, especially if you're new to Lightroom. Uh, hopefully that screen cap helped you see it through my eyes for a little bit. So uh, check out my Instagram. I'll put it below here if you wanna see any of my other work and please like, subscribe, turn on the notifications if you wanna see more videos from me and leave me a comment saying, hey, until next time.